What is up everyone, welcome back to our channel. My name is Miles Rowe and in today's video we'll be having a look at the new Test Drive Unlimited game. Now, of course, we have had two other titles of Test Drive and I can't believe that the very first one is 18 years old. Gosh, this makes you feel a bit old guys. Uh, and Test Drive Unlimited 2, it's 11 years old. So with that being said, it was definitely a game that I was looking forward to, a game that I was a bit excited about. So these are the five things that you should know about this game before buying it so without further ado let's just jump straight into it let's have a look at all of them and i'm sure more videos will come up as the game is not yet finished so with that being said please stay tuned till the end and make sure to use the timestamps down below to navigate the video to your liking right guys so the first point that we'll be speaking about are the graphics the graphics are supported by the kt engine an engine that is quite uh, well known in the racing community it has been uh, available for a number of games uh, such as the wc uh, rally games um, the moto gps etc so it's an engine that definitely holds uh, itself pretty strong within the automotive industry and it's an engine that it does make a huge difference um, from the you know previous uh, games that we have seen of course there's also been uh, 11 years in between so you'd expect that to happen and you know you definitely see this in the latest test drive unlimited game now one of the things that definitely w worked for me in terms of the graphics and one of the things i love the most about this engine is the fact that it doesn't take a lot of time to load the animations and the background so this is kind of always preloaded and it does help because when you're playing a racing game the last thing you want is to have a bit of a lag which you know determines your um, uh, your, your, your finishing line uh, or the other textures inside the game so that for me was a big plus and where i think that the, this engine it's absolutely stunning it's when the map is doing uh, midnight and when it rains believe it or not when this uh, this happens you'll be seeing a lot of reflections and makes it look really photorealistic so for me in terms of graphics i'm quite satisfied and quite pleased with the results and again playing on console this also it's a bit of a drawback in terms of the quality that you receive but given that even on console the quality is really high i'm really pleased so in terms of graphics it's a big thumbs up at number two, another thing that definitely for me worked really well was the map. I absolutely loved how big the map is. Again, something that Test Drive Unlimited sets as a standard, a really in-depth uh, and full of exploration map. Um, and this is exactly what's happening here. You have a massive map uh, which uh, is based on Hong Kong, which I'm, I'm pretty sure it took the guys a while to map because there are a lot of places there that they have absolutely nailed. Um, for me personally, Hong Kong, it's a place that I'm, I'm you know, I'm quite fond of. I've been there many times um, and, you know, seeing this in a video game and to the extent of what they've done with it, it's absolutely stunning. So in terms of the map and the surroundings, you get a bit of everything. You get some uh, off-road action. You've got some... Uh, really underground action as well uh, so it's really really well combined and i think this for me makes again uh, a really nice thing to give a huge thumbs up about right at number three guys we have the game handling now i'm not sure if you remember but test drive unlimited 2 did have some issue in, in terms of how you would handle cars it was particularly difficult at times and i think when you play from from a console um, you don't want to have any sort of limitations in how to drive a car so for me this was definitely a big um, a big problem in the past but I have not noticed it in the new game uh, particularly solo crown simply because it just kind of feels all well blended in how the controls move and feel within the game so but to give you an example for example one of the things that you'd notice when you're trying to kind of uh, take a tight curb if you just press slowly the, the brake button the car will kind of drift away which is quite nicely uh, uh, done when before it would be quite rigid and quite difficult to get those like tight curbs so that was really nice to see and definitely they have added a few more um, elements of you know uh, off-roading drifting donuts and stuff like this which are quite cool to see obviously not similar to other uh, titles of uh, of this nature but definitely unique for the test drive universe 
Right. At number four, we have the realism of cars. Now, there had been a lot of time spent in the cockpits, and you can see that because the inside of the cars looks absolutely stunning. And I think this had been by far one of the most detailed experiences uh, the test drive team have made. But on the engine sound, I think there could have been a bit more work uh, put into this because most of the cars, especially the supercars, sounds alike. There's some differences in between some of them, but it's clearly noticeable when you see the old heritage cars um, that the, the engine sounds have been kept from the previous games, which, believe it or not, they sound better in the older games than in this one. But I'm sure that they are probably aware of this and hopefully we might see some updates regarding this soon. But in my opinion, this was the only thing regarding the engines that could have been a bit different. Now, on the other side, I would also love to see how the handling of these cars is and it would have been nice to actually drive on the right hand side as it actually is in Hong Kong rather than on the left hand side but this is just a small detail and it's not like a huge car crash but with that being said as I as I've mentioned previously the details inside those cars the details on the exteriors of the cars are absolutely brilliant and they have done an amazing job with it and at number five guys a point that i don't mean to sound too negative about or i uh, don't mean to in any way make it a negative point however it's something that it's worth mentioning and it's definitely been something that had been grinding my gears since the game has been launched so i do hope this is going to be fixed but for the time being we need to speak about it because it's something that you guys will experience and it's pretty annoying and that is all because of the servers. Now, as you guys may know, the game itself, it's based on 80% uh, of it being online, which means that for certain progression elements, you need to go through those races and you have to kind of wait for the servers to work in order for your progression to be recorded. So unfortunately, for the time being, we haven't seen servers that are too reliable. And for example, when the game was launched, I had to wait in a queue to launch the game, which I thought was absolutely amazing for a game that, you know, is upwards of 70 pounds. So in this particular order, as I said, I don't mean to make it a negative comment in any way i do think that some updates or patches are required to make the game a bit more playable given that most of the kind of progression overall it's online so you know this is definitely the most annoying thing that i uh, i have experienced and i have to say in the past day or so i have seen an improvement on some of the servers and i think we need to see more work being done anyways um as you know we're probably going to look at uh, a bit of a longer period of time that we'll be playing this game but you know the overall experience itself it's reliant on this and again i can't you know stress enough that i don't mean to make it a negative point but it's something that i have experienced and i'm sure that you guys will appreciate knowing in advance about so in ending guys this is it for today these are my five points regarding the game so far i'm pretty sure that i'll be creating more content regarding the game and obviously as i advance further in the uh, level ups and the storyline i will be sharing this with you guys but for the time being these are the points that i thought are quite important for you guys to know about and as i said as an overall the game is great and it was worth the wait especially because it's on hong kong island an island that at least for me it's um, it's close to my heart and I'm really pleased that I can actually enjoy a game uh, that is based on that particular uh, area. So with that being said, I do hope today's video um, uh, was useful to you guys. And if it was useful, please do let me know in the comment section down below. As always, please like and subscribe to the channel. And if you do feel that I have missed something, please feel free to put in the comment section down below. Please be respectful. As I said, this is something that we share for the community and you know i would expect that everyone will be respecting each other so thank you so much for watching hope to see you guys in the next video soon and for the time being if you have uh, got the game enjoy the most of it many thanks